Hello, it's uh, Paul Beckwith. I've been a member of AMAG, the Arctic Methane Emergency Group, for about two and a half years. AMAG formed um, just about a month or so before I joined. There were a bunch of people in um, the UK who were very concerned about the Russian observations of large increases of methane gas bubbling up from the Eastern Siberian Arctic Shelf, continental shelf. Very large increases of methane relative to previous years. These measurements were confirmed by satellite airs, atmospheric infrared sounder satellite, or atmospheric infrared sounder, so spectrometers on satellites, by other satellites and also by flask measurements on the ground. We're talking about levels of, at that time, they were measure, there were measurements on the ground and up in the upper atmosphere of on the order of 2200 parts per billion. Um, more recently, there's been measurements as high as 2600 parts per billion. Uh, the global average is 1,800 parts per billion, but the levels are elevated in the Arctic. Now, so the Arctic Methane Emergency Group, basically, who is it? Okay, it's not, there's a lot of misconceptions about who we are. We're a bunch of people who have common concerns. We formed an email listserv and anybody can join. In fact, if you want to join now, you know, I can put you on the list. You know, if you have some way to contribute and assist us, then great. If you wonder what we do, I invite you to join us. So what we do, it's, it's not, one of the big misconceptions is that we have a blog called Arctic News. We do not we, AMEG, does not have a blog called Arctic News. One of our members, okay, um, who was a member since, roughly since we formed, and he was a member for about a year or so, which puts it, he left about a year and a half ago, Sam Karana. He does his own blog. In fact, he does many, many blogs. And uh, he, he basically look, gets observations and does some interpretation of them but anything interesting out there on the web pertaining to methane and the Arctic, he will generally re-mirror it on his site or, but he adds a lot of material to it. He does good work for the most part. I have had some differences with him on some of his statistics and some of his math, and we've hashed that out and, uh, you know, he's doing his own thing. So some of these criticisms um, for example, the Scott Johnson um, so-called rebuttal of Guy McPherson, lumping AMEG in with that, that is complete BS, okay? He's talking about Sam Karana, um, information that Guy McPherson is using based on some of Sam Karana's uh, stuff. Not AMEG, okay? That's one thing. Second thing is, you know, people have been saying AMEG is one scientist, Peter Wadhams at the UK, you know, just a scientist. Well, Peter is not just a scientist. He is the UK's, pretty much the UK's top sea ice scientist. He's a big name in the field. Read his book on sea ice that just came out recently. Um, Peter has been going, doing field work in the Arctic for 35 years. He's been Many of those years, he's been in a British nuclear submarine under the ice, measuring the thickness of the ice. Peter is not just a scientist. So he is our most, he's clearly our, our most prominent, well-recognized scientist. To hear people slamming him is, they're, they're worse than deniers to be doing this, in my opinion. John Neeson, is the founder, one of the co-founders of AMED. Okay, um, he has some science background, some technical background. Um, there's myself, 
I'm an engineer, engineering physics. I also have a master's degree in laser physics, so I have tendencies towards being a physicist. And I've been teaching as a part-time professor climatology and meteorology at the U of O. I can use that designation part-time professor or sessional. I'm also a PhD researcher uh, working towards my PhD. I have chosen to spend a lot of time advocating and educating people about the dangers and risks of climate change. What point is there me getting a degree when the world, you know, if the planet is basically collapsing underneath me? So I want to find out the stuff that I know, the stuff that I determine, which other scientists would hold close to the best and go through the publication and peer review process. I have chosen up to now not to do that. That, w that is switching because I have to finish the degree at some point and I need three or four papers. So I'm tr I'll be transitioning over to that, but I'm not gonna stop talking about this stuff. I'm not gonna stop talking about information that I know about the climate. In fact, I've been talking about the Arctic sea ice collapse causing jet stream waviness before Francis, uh, Jennifer Francis's paper came out in March of uh, March of 2012 or 2013, can't remember which one. Anyway, for since AMEG formed, I've been talking about sea ice. I mean, AMEG's premise is sea ice is collapsing. Okay, it's dropping exponentially. Snow cover is also doing the same thing. The Arctic is warming very, very rapidly and methane emissions are coming up and we're worried they're gonna get a lot worse. So we have ideas to cool the Arctic via some, call it geoengineering, um, cool the Arctic to keep the ice in place and the snow in place so the climate extremes, weather extremes don't go bananas while we slash emissions. Um, we need to slash emissions. We need to get people on board to do this. We're running into enormous problems. So AMEG, who else is in AMEG? We have, we have an IPCC officer. We have scientists who would prefer not to be named, um, or I need to check with them before I name them. But we have um, an IPCC author um, who uh, is very well known in the, in the in, and he's been an author a couple times a reviewer and an, a, prim, a primary author, I believe. We also have um, one of the top um, geoengineers um, in the UK. Um, we also have, we have had regular email conversations with people like Francis. I personally have talked to Trenberth. I've talked to David Archer along with other people. Okay, these, um, we're coming at this from a different angle. With us, what you hear from us is exactly what our view is. Okay, there's no holes barred, there's no political stuff, well, none of us are doing this for money, we're not getting any cent for this affiliation and this email exchange group. We have a web page. Sam was the webmaster. When he left, it became much more sporadic. We do post some things on there. Um, we just, we, we have given presentations to the British Parliament, uh, to the Canadian Parliament. We have uh, presented lots of papers at conferences, etc. the individual scientists. But it's not just scientists. We have a filmmaker among us. We have a PhD economist among us. We have some engineers among us. We have a medical doctor among us. We're just people like you guys that are probably watching this, that are interested in climate change. Only we've been doing it for longer than you. We've been doing it perhaps. I mean, we've been doing it as a group for two and a half years. You know, now that, um, uh, now that things are getting a lot worse, people are looking at us more seriously, but you know, deniers haven't been too much of a problem with us. What's been a problem with us is groups like Global Warming Fact of the Day. You know, they call themselves Fact of the Day, and yet they put all these mistruths and misconceptions about AMEG. Granted, they came from Scott Johnson's and uh, Michael Tobis's uh, blogs, uh, which we haven't bothered to reply to now. 
but uh, consider this a rebuttal. You know, they, they're very welcome to call me, any of these people. 613-979-3957. You know, instead of, instead of trying to chip away at AMEG from the dark recesses, come directly and talk to me and I can tell you all about AMEG and add you to the email list if you want. But I'm getting extremely sick of the largest opposition to what AMEG has been doing for years to be coming from so-called mainstream science people. Um, you know, it's just, uh, it's just insane. Anyway, it doesn't matter in the end. We continue what we're doing. We're not going to stop. And uh, we need to solve this problem. There's lots of common ground that we have. Uh, look at some of my previous videos to see what I think about how mainstream science, peer-reviewed science, is just not fast enough to meet the problems that we face with, with uh, abrupt and extreme climate change and extreme weather. Um, thank you.